Hey, Fred from the Laptop Barn here. <laughs> Today we're going to show you how to change the memory in a Dell Precision 7520 laptop. This particular model allows you to use four memory modules, or up to four memory modules. Two are located on the bottom of the laptop, and the other two are on the top under the keyboard. So depending on how much memory you're trying to put in your laptop, that will determine whether or not you have to access both of these areas. The simplest thing and easiest to get at is on the bottom. And if your memory requirement is, let's say you wanna to try to put 32 gigabytes in a system that's currently only got eight, you would only have to put two 16 gigabyte modules and you could put them both on the bottom and not have to worry about accessing the top panel. We're gonna show you how to get at both areas so that you could put up to four memory modules in there. You could have four 32s, which would give you 128 gig of memory. Um, so we're gonna show you how to get at those areas, and then it'll be up to how much memory you're putting in as to uh, which modules you put where. Uh, so for our purpose, we're gonna show you how to do it. At the end of it, of this uh, video, I'm gonna say a few words about uh, memory selection. Uh, the most important is that when you put these in in a pair, whether it's a top or the bottom, that they're identical modules. We recommend two identical modules, same speed, same vendor, same number of chips on the board. We'll talk some more about that in a little bit. Okay, to get started, we're going to access the bottom panel by getting to the bottom of the laptop. There's a slide that you engage the button and the half of the battery cover compartment will slide right off without even needing a tool. So now you get the battery out and underneath the battery are a couple of, um, there's a couple of screws there which you unassemble to get the rest of the bottom cover off and it'll slide in that case away from the operator. Okay, now there's the two memory slots on the bottom. If you were only going to mess with two slots, you don't have to go any further. But if you want to get to the other side and access the other two slots, you got to undo the keyboard assembly as shown. This is the keyboard connector as shown in the picture here. It's got a little zero and four insertion force connector. It had a piece of tape over it too. We took the tape off first. Um, and now we're going to flip the laptop over. There, we've got to get the keyboard off. There's a couple of slots there where the keyboard retaining ring is snapped into place. You just pry it up at the area where we showed you and be careful, pull it right off. It just snaps into place. Now the keyboard itself is held by six screws. And you'll see us taking the six screws off this will allow you to lift the keyboard because those two memory slots are right underneath the keyboard assembly. Okay, so there's fifth key screw and the sixth screw. Okay, now you can use your pry tool and just pry up on the keyboard get it started in one corner and then you just kind of work your way around and it'll unsnap. Now there's a connector on it so don't pull it all the way up. Just get it unsnapped. Now you can see the and just then all you need to do is just flip it over. Now you can see a panel door there and underneath that panel door is where the other two memory slots are. So you take the panel door off. It's held by a screw and there they are. Again, your mechanization of how many memory modules you're gonna use will determine what you're gonna put in. But for this purpose, we're just gonna show you how to put them in. There are two slots there and they snap in. 
At that point, you've got the memory modules installed, and you're going to put the door back on, assemble it with its mounting screw, and then uh, put your um, keyboard in, mounting it on the top, and it'll be held back in with those six screws. Get the top needs to be located first. We didn't quite get it in there. Let's try it one more time. Locate the top. There's some tabs up there you'll see as you're going to install them. And just make sure the tabs on the top of the keyboard are into the retaining ring. And then use your six screws and reassemble the keyboard. Just as shown here. Helps to magnetize your screwdriver. Ours is getting a little unmagnetized. I'm going to remagnetize it here in just a second. And the screws will hold that in place. I'm going to remagnetize our screwdriver. Ah, it works a lot better now. The screws stay onto the magnet. Okay, and there's our assembly held back in place. Now you just have to put the retaining ring back on, place it over and run your fingers along it and it'll snap into place. As shown here, you just check it all around to make sure it's totally snapped in. Okay, so we've now put the memory modules in the bottom. Now we're going to flip it over and reattach the connectors to the keyboard. They slide into a groove and then the white plastic handle just comes upward and snaps it into place. No tool required, just do it all with your fingers. Snapped in place, put it in the slot, snap it in place. Okay, now we can put the battery back um, Oh, we can put the other other side panel in. Again, that just slides in. You put it in and it slides forward. And there's a couple of screws then to hold it in that position. And now the battery slips in. And the other half of the bottom cover locate, slide forward, and snaps in place. And that's it. You have successfully assembled those. Next, we're going to say a few words about memory. Okay, now that you know how to get the memory modules in place, I want to say just a couple of words about memory. It is critical from our experience to put your modules in pairs that are identical. By identical, we mean from the same manufacturer, the same number of chips on the mo on memory module, and certainly the same speed. So in our case, um, we use two memory modules from SK Hynex that both had the same amount of chips on the board and both were the same speed rating. The speed rating and then all those things are right on the label. So you can see this by looking at the systems, and we just recommend that you put these in in identical modules that match each other. In the old days, 10 years ago or so, that was uh, the systems would, would rarely boot if you didn't have matching memory. Nowadays, they will work, but you're taking your chances to be safe. I recommend that you put them in in, in identical pairs. In the picture here, you'll see two SK Hynix modules that are both 16 gigabytes and they look identical, the same amount of chips. They also are the same speed. You see the speed rating on the label. It says PC4-2666. So the speed on both of these is identical. Again, 
good practice to have. Put them in identical pairs. They might work not being identical pairs, but you're playing a little bit of a roulette game. And I we certainly recommend putting them in in identical pairs. So get yourself some memory that matches. Pair them up in the bottom and the top of the assembly. That's it for this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel and uh, we post uh, tips like this uh, to help our customers and in the general public. So if you have any questions or comments, put it down below. If not, subscribe to us. And if you like this video, hit the like button. Fred from the Laptop Barn, over and out.